As of yesterday, I have lived in Germany for six years. And while I've already done a video talking about what things can the US learn from Germany, I thought today would be fair to flip things around. What can Germany learn from the US? Stay tuned to find out more. I'm Madi, science fiction and fantasy author who's been living in southern Germany since 2014. Like I said earlier, as of yesterday, it was my sixth anniversary living in the land of beer and pretzels. And I thought today would be a good day to tackle the other half of this topic that I've already touched on in an earlier episode, what can the US learn from Germany? Today, we're going to talk about what can Germany learn from the US? When you're living abroad, you are quick to realize all of the kind of pros and cons in your new country, things that they do better than your home country, or things that maybe things that could have been brought over from your home country. And that latter part is what we're gonna talk about today. Just a quick disclaimer, everything I talk about in this video is my own personal opinion. That's what they are. You can get angry at me all you want, but that's not gonna change my opinion. <laughs> I still very much love Germany. I don't plan on going anywhere, but at the same time, there are some things that, you know, could be improved upon. But before we get started, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell if you haven't already. Here on Adventures of Lamadi, we talk about writing, living abroad, and everything in between. So let's get on to the list, shall we? Number one, ribs. Yeah, I know. I was gonna talk about it. I was gonna talk about it. I mean, like, your burger game, guys, your burger game, <clears throat> well done. Well done, this American thanks you, you know, because if ever I get homesick and want a good burger, and I'm not talking about like McDonald's or Burger King. I'm talking about like actual burger joints. Well done, guys. Well done. Your ribs came on the other hand. Oh, you're, you're getting there, guys. You're getting there. And I think, I think in my lifetime, I'll see it. I think I, I think I see it. I think what's actually lacking is a proper ribs joint. Because a lot of times if you go to like American themed restaurants or whatever, they will have ribs. But the problem is a lot of times they're again, this is just from my experience, I think they're not cooked long enough. So they're still really tough and they're, they don't have that like literally melting off the bone softness. And you only get that when you're literally cooking it for like the whole day <laughs> to get to get that level level of like, you know, my mouth is watering right now of amazingness. And I, I think that's part of it. Um, we actually just invested in a Traeger pellet grill recently, and we actually did do a, like, a rack of ribs. And it took six hours just on the grill itself, not including some of, like, the in-between steps that we had to do with, like, sauces and whatnot to help, you know, improve that process or to, like, uh, enrich that process. But uh, it's it's not something like when you're when you're grilling in general because I know Germany has a very, has a big grill culture yay 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 love it. Um, it's not like throwing steaks on a grill or anything where it's like oh as long as it heats up it's fine. It 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 takes time. It it takes a lot longer than that. It's not something you can just throw on for an afternoon. It's something you have to have prepared. You know much longer. <laughs> but I think you'll get there. I know there are a lot of Germans who have because there are some like uh, barbecue contests and whatnot so I, like I said it's, it's getting there it's getting there I think it just needs to uh, it needs to just spread out more and and more Germans should learn these things <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about or maybe you do know what I'm talking about but th that's you're getting there guys I've repeated this like a million times already but I'm saying this with earnest number two customer service yeah that was another topic. I'm sure I'm going to get comments, oh, every American talks about this. But I, it's because there's something to be said about it. Now, to be fair, I have lived in Germany for six years, and honestly, I haven't had terrible customer service. I mean, I do understand the, 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 the problem with American customer service. And, and the example is uh, my husband and I were at a restaurant uh, in the States. We were having dinner with a friend and our waitress had come by, was like, oh, how you guys doing? You know, like the typical American, American like service, customer service uh, question, you know, just, a, you know, in the, in, in between. And my husband had food in his mouth and he was like, you know, right at the edge and he like looked up deer in the headlights and he, he was very frustrated because he felt expected to answer that he that he was expected to answer 
he wasn't, and I, I and I told him this. It's just somebody, somebody at the table was like, you know, we're fine, okay, and then she just left, and that was it. It wasn't like she was looking and expecting every single person at the table to tell them exactly how they were feeling at that very moment. It was just a very quick blanket response in case somebody needed something. It is just, it was just a quick thing. As an American, you're used to that. It's just something that like it happens in the back of your mind. Somebody says, "How you doing?" You're like, "Yeah, it's fine," and you, it it doesn't require much thought because we're just used to it. But for somebody who's not like my German husband, it was very frustrating because he's like, "I'm in the middle of eating. Why are you talking to me?" And I understand that. I absolutely understand that. But like I said, that's because you're in the middle of eating. Like they they're not expecting you to respond. <laughs> Don't worry about it guys. It's it's really not it's really not as like deep as you think it is, but at the same time I, I get it. However, I do have an example of horrendous, horrendous customer service experience in Germany. Uh mostly from my sister. As I said, I've lived in Germany for six years now, and I've never actually experienced terrible customer service except when somebody's having a shitty day, somebody shat in their cereal or whatever, and they're in a bad mood and they decided they're going to make everybody in their surrounding vicinity in a bad mood. And I do not appreciate that. Um, I have I have come across that in stores, not just uh, in restaurant settings. Actually, restaurant settings, not so much, personally. But in stores, and it's like, I don't care. I don't care if you're having a bad day. It's bad business for you to scare off your customers with your nasty attitude. But that, I feel like, is allowed here. I can because it's just a lot harder to fire people than in the states. I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, are you a fan of that sort of thing? I, I of uh, having to, you know, when you the one time you need to ask a question of somebody at a store and they just snap at you, like you just sacrificed some babies or something ridiculous. Um, the the story that I, I'm I'm rambling, but the story I wanted to talk about was uh, with my sister. Um, this happened the day after my wedding, so this was in 2016. Um, after our wedding, we got married in Castle Kolmberg and I took my family members to Hordenburg of the Tauber and I took them to the to the city, the old city center and I was like, here you go, get out of here, go run, run around for three hours. I'll meet you back here and we'll go home. Like you guys do whatever you want. I went to some restaurant to just kind of like cool my heels because I've been, I, I think I only had like I think I only had like three hours of sleep. I was very tired. Um, so everybody was doing their own thing. When I got closer to the end, I went back to, this, to, the, to the, the center to like meet up with people and I saw my sister and her husband sitting outside at a restaurant on the square. And um, they, they, looked, they looked rather traumatized, to put it lightly. And I asked them what had happened. And um, so they sat outside and they, their waiter came to ask for their order. They just wanted something quick to eat and they thought it would be quick. Fortunately, it was not. Um, and when they asked for something to drink, my sister pulled up her water bottle and was like, I don't need anything to drink. I have something. Now, before I continue with the story and before you at me, I know that in Germany that is considered rude. The thing is, in the States, it is not. <laughs> At least outside the the rules in with restaurant etiquette in the states if you're sitting inside of a restaurant of course you don't bring your own drink but if you're sitting outside because it's kind of public space the rules are a little gray my sister did not mean to be malicious about it it was just it, it, she didn't think about it the waiter then proceeded to yell at her and then yelled fucking americans before going inside to take their their order inside my sister felt really bad. Like she, she told me, she's like, had I known that that was not allowed, I would not have done it, you know? And it, so it's not like, oh, entitled Americans. No, she, she genuinely wouldn't, she's a person that really tries her hardest to not step on toes. She really does not like to insult people or to cause discomfort. And for her, she just felt like scum of the earth. And it did not help that the waiter yes, like said fucking Americans before going inside. And I was livid. I mean, my sister comes to Germany for one week and has to deal with this. I've lived in Germany for six years and I've never had to deal with this. Like, oh my goodness. And it's like, it's no wonder Americans come back from Europe if they, if they, in that one week they just happen to have like that one jerk. And it's just like, oh God. And they were like, you know, they were, they wanted to actually leave. They'd already made their 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 um, order, but 
they wanted it to go because they didn't want to stay there any longer, which I understood. So I went inside. I found the waiter. I tried to tell him, hey, can, can I just go ahead and just have it packed to go? Um, we actually need to get going. Um, he ignored me and was actually even in the process of yelling at his own coworkers. So he was one of those people that like was having a bad day and decided that everyone around them had to have a bad day. And I found that extremely unprofessional. Um, I, I, oh, that just... I mean, that's, that's, at this point, it's been almost four years to the day because that was uh, the day after my wedding, which was June 11th. So it was on June 12th, and and I'm still I'm I'm still kind of seeing red when I think about this because it's like this is Gothenburg of the Tauber. This is a tourist city. Like, if you're gonna come and work with tourists, understand they're gonna do stupid things. They're gonna do things that are not German. We Americans deal with it all the time and we usually just brush it off because yeah, they're not they're not from here, they're gonna do weird things. Who cares? But if you're gonna work in a tourist industry, try to have a little bit of an open mind. If not, just go back to your village and and find another job that doesn't require you to be around tourists. Ugh. Needless to say, after that experience, I've never eaten at that restaurant. I will never eat at that restaurant. Um I always uh stare disdainly at said restaurant whenever I walk past it. And in case you're wondering which restaurant it was, it was the Ratstube in Hordenburg of the Taube. Thankfully, this was the day after our wedding where they had, all of our guests had had literally, and I quote, the best customer service experience they have ever had in their lives. Thank goodness. <laughs> because that very negative experience did not mar my sister's experience of being in Germany. In fact, she wants to come back very badly. So yes, 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 please come back. I promise you, German restaurants are not this bad. But was that guy fired? No, because I saw him still at that restaurant like a while after that. So if you pulled a stunt like that in the States, you would have been kicked out at that very moment in front of those customers. I I don't know, I, I, I wonder, I, I, can can any of you guys in Germany explain that to me? Like, is is it because it, it, that it's really hard to fire somebody? Like, why that kind of attitude is kind of just allowed and brushed under the rug? I I don't understand that. Um, unfortunately, like it it's that level of professionalism. I I don't understand how that's allowed. So please, can anybody explain to me why how? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very much at a loss at it. And I think that if you just got rid of those bad apples or made it very clear that there are consequences to unprofessionalism like that, we wouldn't have a problem because German customer service is not that bad, but those bad apples really, really bring it down a lot, a lot. Number three, kitchens in rentals and houses. So, that was kind of worded a little weirdly. But for those of you not in the know, in Germany, it is very common that when you rent an apartment or you rent a house, sometimes it comes without a kitchen. That's right. You rent a place and you have to also build your own kitchen, which includes your own fridge. And if you use a microwave, a microwave. And that just, that enrages me. Like how, I mean, as an American, you know, like, I've rented houses and I've rented in apartments. And that's, I mean, like, as an American, you look at that and you think, how cheap does that owner have to be to not provide a kitchen? Like, one thing I do like with, with rentals in Europe is you can find fully furnished apartments, which is which is great for me when I first moved here and I had nothing to have, you know, like an apartment with a bed and everything. And that's great. So you have that. So how is it you go from that to like not only it being empty, but there's no kitchen? like. How, what is the justification of that? Let me know, let me know what, what, how is that allowed? Because, okay, you build your kitchen and it's great and kitchens are not terribly expensive in, in Germany, especially, you know, with Ikea and everything. But then when you move, then you either have to sell that kitchen to the owner or take it with you and hope it fits in your new place of, of living or I, I don't, I don't get that. That's so, that's so silly to me. I do not understand this concept. In the States, you will never find that. If you're renting a, a house or an apartment, it comes with everything, without furniture. You bring your own furniture, but I feel like that's, that's kind of, you know, that, that's a given, but it comes with a kitchen. That's, the, the, but the, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to dwell on that any further, but that, that I just don't understand. 
Number four, ceiling fans. So I get that Germans are not a big fan of AC and that's fine, you know what, that's fine. But I feel like having a ceiling fan would be a good compromise. That's very in the States. You have air conditioning and ceiling fans because ceiling fans actually help keep energy costs down because you can use it to, you know, circulate the room with cold, cool air or warm air, you know, depending on the season. But at least that's that was why when my dad designed our house, that's why he did it was to help keep energy costs down so we didn't have to have air conditioning that high. We were also people that don't like air conditioning that much either. So it's ours is pretty low. But you know what I mean? Like, they're not that hard to install. I don't know. Like, that's something you just don't see in Europe. Maybe just because you're, you're used to not having it. So it just doesn't occur to you to have it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Have, have any of you guys lived anywhere with ceiling fans? What do you think? I, I think it would, especially like in our house currently, without air conditioning, at least a ceiling fan would be nice. Like, if we, if we can't install air conditioning, a ceiling fan goes a long way. Number five waiting in line <laughs> you also hear this a lot too if you hear like any other americans it's like oh my god why do americans talk about germans can't wait in lines okay but i have a story i have a story on this okay because most when i when i watch other americans talk about like germans inability to wait in line the the example they always use is at the at, the, at like a, an aldi or a, you know at a grocery store where like you have this long line at a cashier and then you know at like station two and then you get an announcement station three is opened up and technically so you have like the line like like this yeah okay <laughs> and then technically it's like these people then just transfer their line here they still stay in the same order but then just move over but the reason why germans can't stand in line because they just kind of go whoever's the fastest is first in line I, I've done that too in the States. I, I don't necessarily think that's, that for me, that doesn't qualify not standing in line. But I think also probably because I'm half Peruvian and Peruvians are the same way when it comes to that. Like it's, the, the quickest is, is there. Like the, the quickest person gets served first. I don't know. That could just be the Peruvian side in me. I, I, I don't know. I've never, I've never noticed that. However, <laughs> this happened to me about five years ago. Um, we were in Oftaschwang. This is right on the German Austria. This is Germany, but right on the Austrian border. Uh, our village goes to Oftaschwang every year for like a day of snowboarding or skiing. It's only three hours away, so it's an easy day trip for us. Um, this specific area where we go has only one place to rent equipment. Yeah, I mean there are other, yeah. So this was on. I was first learning to snowboard, and and the actual if I don't know how, how it works in the states to actually like get your equipment. I I do like the system that it has, and that is like you go to the first station where you found you you pick out your shoes, whether it's skis or snowboarding boots. Uh, yeah, snowboarding boots. Then you go to the next station where you get your board or your skis, and then your third station is where they fit everything. You know, how, like the the direction it needs to go, or the size of the shoe to the ski or whatever. And then this one. Um, you have your last station, which is where you get your goggles and your gloves, or not gloves, or like your helmet or whatever, and where you pay for everything. That's where the problem was. <laughs> because you, you don't get there soon enough, that, then you're there when all the buses arrive, and it's a mob. There, if such a, if such a store was created in the States, especially at that last station, people would have automatically just gotten in a line. But there, because there was no designation, at least that's how my husband puts it, because there was no designation to tell you to stand in line, then Germans will not stand in line. They will mop. And it took me an hour and a half to get past that, to get past that area to pay for my stuff because I'm very small and uh, Germans are, are very pushy and loud. And um, yeah, I kept feeling like I was in a third world country because as an American and even as a Peruvian, we're taught the inability to stand in line shows lack of education. Obviously it's not true. Germans are very educated. They just can't stand in line. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness like it was it was awful it was awful I came out of there livid livid and even more so because I could see my husband like on the other side of the of the counter and he's like hurried up I'm like how the am I gonna hurry it up I am competing against these all these other Vikings who are twice as tall as I am like 
ow, how? <laughs> I did have to go proving on them and I then had to get equally aggressive and that's how I was able to pay. But again, I had to be a Peruvian. I had to go Peruvian on Germans in order to get my stuff. And it's, ugh, it's like, if you guys would have just st stood in line, everybody would have equally gotten through. Oh God, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't feel like I need to explain this, but like, my goodness. That for me is whenever we joke, you know, whenever I hear people say, oh, Germans can't stand in line. I think of that day. That day was awful. It was awful. Since then, I bought my own equipment. I was, I was like, I we go to Oftenschwang and often enough. I'm like, I am not going through that nightmare ever again. Oh my goodness. On the other hand, last year we were in another area in Oftenschwang where they did have designated areas to stand in line, and there was no problem. But it's like, why do you have to be told to stand in line? Why can't it just be like? an automatic thinking i don't i don't know <laughs> what do you guys think uh have you experienced that sort of uh mob experience before do you like it i didn't like it <laughs> let me know let me know in the comments below like or also let me know what you think why that is in germany why why is it that way my husband has his his uh theories but i i i well, I think he's very sarcastic, so I'm not going to actually tell you on this channel. But I would love to hear what you guys think, so let me know in the comments below. Number six, patriotism. <sighs> now, here's here's the thing, here's the thing. I, I, I will admit, the U.S. is going through a very, very weird phase right now in terms of not understanding the difference between patriotism and nationalism. However... And I understand because of Germany's past and everything that there's a wariness in showing your love for your country, like visibly showing it. But I moved to Germany in 2014 and that was the year Germany won the World Cup. And I'm literally getting chills talking about this, but there was, I, there's nothing that brought me more joy than seeing my husband wearing his, you know, Germany jersey, having the German flag painted on his cheek and like... Ah, oh, to see the, that look of pure joy and love on his face and pride. I loved seeing that. Like, I love seeing that with, like, the normal Americans, <laughs> not the crazies. So, you, you, if you know what I'm talking about, like, I love seeing that, that, that pride in your country. And I think Germany is such a fantastic country. And I, I think you guys should totally be proud and show it. And I still understand, like I said, I understand the wariness of it because you still got, you, you got your own crazies you have to deal with. And I think you guys are doing a better job at stamping that out than we Americans are. But I just, I just, I love, I love seeing you guys show your love for your country. And I, and I think it's, and, and I'm glad that during the World Cup, at least, or even Europe Cup, you have that outlet where you can, where you can do it without, with, without having to feel like, guilt or shame or whatever the myriad of feelings you you guys feel or been told you have to feel but i yeah i i kind of want to see it more often I, I i think you guys have a wonderful country i think you guys deserve to have that pride that you feel for your country and i think you guys deserve to be able to show it but that's just me that's that's just me <laughs> and number seven a more robust music program in your public schools. That's coming from me. I mean, that that's, that's very much me as somebody who, I mean, like, I know you guys have music programs in your schools, and I am specifically talking about the school programs or the school systems directly in my area because as far as I know, unless something changes, when we have children, this will be the school system they go to school in. And when I look back at my high school experience in the States, a lot of it is what you see on television with the very, like the very aggressive sports culture. And yes, we have like the performing arts. I went, I went to a very, very big high school. I went to a high school about 3000 students. My graduating class was over 400 students. Uh, we had a performing arts program of 1200. So like half the school was part of it. We had, um, five orchestras, seven bands, and nine choirs. And then don't for not forgetting the theater program itself, which I think there was at least one theater troupe and then at least a couple other like smaller theater troops for underclassmen. A lot of these, these bigger programs you were allowed to join when you were a sophomore, so in your 10th year, <clears throat> your freshman year, your ninth grade. 
it, you, you you usually join like freshman orchestra, freshman band or whatever is kind of like, okay, you're first getting into it. But then once you get into your 10th year, then you can be in these programs where you're mixed with the rest of the school or the, uh, you know, other upperclassmen. Um, my our nephews here for example yes they do learn school but it's only for like one or two years and you're only with your grade you don't mix with other classmen and yeah it's just i feel like overall with when it comes to with extracurriculars in general you don't have as enough i feel like if you want to play sports in germany it's pretty much just soccer i mean there's handball and you know there are other sports of course but they're they're not raised to the level of of holiness as soccer or football i'm gonna say soccer i'm american <laughs> soccer 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 so it, it's it's not raised to that same level while in the states in my in my high school you could play soccer and american football and rugby and baseball and basketball and lacrosse and tennis and volleyball and I'm sure I missed some other sports, but that's just off the top of my head. While in sh in in the performing arts, you know, you had all your bands. We had marching band. I was in show choir, uh, which I really miss. And 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 because the whole point of you know sports, they 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 encourage you to join sports because it helps you with teamwork. So does performing arts. When being in a symphony or being in a show, you learn that every you know all the pieces come together. For a show, it requires teamwork. Like I, I, I just that's one thing that I'm, I am sad about not raising my kids in the states is because that they will miss out on such a cool culture. And I know somebody's going to bring up the whole school shooting, school shooting business. When I was in school, we hadn't reached that point to the point where we are now. We didn't have active shooting drills, and that was 15 years ago when I graduated. If I were to have a kid today, it would be another 15 years before they would start high school. So, I, you know, the U.S. is in a, we, we swing in a pendulum in terms of our, of our political ideals. And right now we're kind of in this area. Trust me, we're going to swing back. <sighs> so I don't, I don't know. You, you, aside from that craziness that's going on in the States, like that's, that's a culture that I really, really miss. And I, I wish you guys had here because your academics, of course, are fantastic. But having mu more music in your life have there are a lot of studies that have shown that it, it's just it's just better for 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 development and i i feel like i'm gonna have to take on that burden to fill in the gaps that german education lacks not just with music but also in in language particularly spanish because spanish is not really offered in schools in germany at least again in my in my area in my area i don't, I don't know how it is in bigger schools um those of you who live in or near the cities what do you guys think? Do do you have like maybe more robust music programs or are, are they part of these public school system curriculum or is it still just outside clubs? I would I would love to know. I would love to know how it works in other parts of Germany. Like I said, I'm only talking about my specific area because this will be the school system my kids will grow up in unless we end up moving back to the States. But in the meantime, this is this is where my experience and my views of this topic come from so let me know how it works in the rest of germany please let me know in the comments below granted those were the big things i have some smaller things that i could have touched on but i felt like uh, nah, they're just very minor minor inconveniences i really this video was long enough i didn't need to <laughs> i didn't need to bring the other topics in um for those of you who have been in the states what other things would you like to see in germany from the states um i would love to hear comments um let me know in the comments below. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up. It lets me and YouTube know you like content like this and you want to see more. If you have any question, comments, topics you'd like to see on this channel, please let me know in the comments below. The God Queen is available in both ebook and paperback. I have all the links for the book in the description below. And don't forget to connect with me on social media, whether it is through Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. And that's it for today. Until next time, adieu.